from heaven and earth, it was in his hand. We thank you that with him living in us, greater things shall we do according to the word. Father, we thank you because, you know what? Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And Father, we thank you because you thought so much of us that you would come to live with us and give us victory in every area of our lives that we would allow you to take charge of. Father, we thank you today because this is our time. This is our opportunity not only to praise you and to thank you for everything you've done up to this moment, but this is our time to commit to you and learn more about you. Father, in obedience to your word, where it, where it says, grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we take this time out of our day to focus in on learning about you, God, so that we can change the world, so that we can show the victory that we have in you through Christ and the power of your Holy Ghost. Father, we praise you today for everything that's going to happen because we know you are in control. Father, we thank you because we get the opportunity to live a life full of you. And Father, we thank you because the word said, when we are weak, then your strength comes and makes us strong. So Father, with an insurance policy like that, with coverage like that, we are willing to take on every aspect of life, knowing that you will be there with the strength to take us through. So Father, we want to live a life pleasing to you, and today we come to thank you for all that you've done and to say thank you, God. And we've come to bless your name. And God, we've come to, as you said in your word, take your, your, our, your, your yoke upon us and learn of you. So today, God, we want to learn of you. And God, we want your spirit to be an ever-present part of our lives. And we thank you for everything you've done in our lives. Holy Spirit, have your way in our lives. If there's anything not right, make it right. Father, we know that you are the strength of God. The Holy Spirit is the resurrection power. And the same way that he brought Christ from the dead, he can bring us to an overcoming position in every aspect of our lives. So this day, we declare victory over our lives. This day, we declare victory over our lives. And, and we're not going to be lost, unlucky, left out. We are the people of vision and victory. And we thank you, God. Bless every family that's represented here today. Bless them. Bless everyone that's a part of that family. Let them be blessed, God, by the richness of your power and your insight in their lives. Bless them, God. Without a doubt, we'll know that we have been revived when we, when we shall leave this place. We're here to be revived in our relationship with you, in our relationship with others. God bless you. You may have your seats. God bless you. Amen. Amen. It's good to know that when you leave the Lord's place, you're going to be revived. I remember when I used to party. I party. I didn't go to a party to leave the same way I came in. I went to the party with things on my mind. I had a preparation. I had a party clothes. Because, you know, Thursday sometimes we would get a little high on the job, get a little whatever, whatever. Because we figured we could stumble through Friday in preparation. But what happens is that there is a mindset. The, 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 the temptation says, Friday the eagle fly. And so do I. That's, that's, what, that's what they said. So on Fridays, people have their minds made up. They've already, by midday, they're already into Saturday or into Friday night. Their clothes are there. They've called their friends. They know where the party's going to be. They know where their favorite drink is going to be. They, look, Fridays are pretty well mapped out for parties. They know. They done said who's having what party where, where to coordinate with who. They know what the color scheme gonna be, uh, 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 especially if you, sometimes you go to a cabaret or something and y'all got your little outfits and everybody coming in there, y'all know this thing. So this is what happens. But I like to have the same preparation when I come to the church. I like to anticipate. The Bible says how blessed it is and how good and great it is for, for, for men to dwell together in unity. In Psalms 133, David said, he said, um, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. There ought to be a place just like your house where you can act. You ought to be able to go to your house and relax. Mm -hmm. Your physical man. That should be a place where you can go and relax your spiritual man. That should be a place where your spiritual man can come in and know that it's not going to get some dope. <laughs> that it's going to get some real food that it needs to live. So today we're going to talk about love being commitment because we want to talk about, and we're going to hinder around John 3.16. So my, my grandson said, Granddad, that's your favorite scripture. Well, all scripture is favorite scripture, but I like that one because had God not been in, so in love with us, he wouldn't have put all this plan in place. Yes. 
And, and see, like Daryl here, he has a little girl he called Baby Girl. And when Baby Girl hit this world, it was over. <laughs> For Daryl so loved Baby Girl that he still given and will be given until one of them leave here. <laughs> And that's just a commitment that is, what? Well, don't even have to worry about it. Uh, uh, hey, look, you don't, that's an unquestionable commitment. If you asked him not to take care of her, you know what he would say? Have you lost your mind? See, it, it, some things are just written in stone. If you was to ask God not to love humanity, he would say, what? Have you lost your mind? Did it look like I was going to stop loving them after I emptied heaven and gave them my only begotten son? If I was going to stop, I would have stopped before I broke the bank, right? I would have stopped way back when I wouldn't have had baby girl. I wouldn't have, you see, if I was not going to be committed, I wouldn't have. And so God said, if I started the commitment, how will I end the commitment? And that is always the challenge. How do I start the commitment? Now, how will I end the commitment? Now, one songwriter has a song on the radio I hear on 104 and 1 every now and then. He said, he said, strong finish because I have strong faith. Oh, somebody know that one? A hey, strong finish, strong finish. Why? Because I have strong faith. And now, see, only strong faith will let you have a what? A strong finish. Now that's taken from Paul. It said, I fought a good fight. I kept the faith. Henceforth there laid up for me a crown of righteousness. See, it's all right to start something, but you gotta have the faith to continue to the even the Bible says this. Who, who's gonna get the prize? He that endureth to the to the end, the same shall be saved. So now let's turn in our Bibles to uh, I'm just excited today. How many of y'all are excited? You know I'm excited? Because I love a good meal. And I, I anticipate and I have an expectation that God is going to do something because he's true to his word. Now, let's start off with faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is evidence of things not seen. Now, the Bible tells us in Mark, around the 11th verse, it says, have faith. 1124, somewhere around there. It, have faith in God. Now, what does that mean to me? Have faith in God is not just to have faith in faith. I have faith in God. Now, what is the part of God that I have faith? I have faith in the fact that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word with God, and that God don't just talk to be talking. And God is not a separatist in mind, heart, and spirit. That God, when he speaks, his mind, his heart, and his mouth is all one accord. Yeah. God does not speak and leave his heart out of it. He don't know how to exist without a total unity. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us who knows the mind of God, yet the spirit of God. Who knows the mind of a man, but a man's spirit. Now, in humans, sometimes our minds and our hearts and our mouths may be saying different things. But God would not, it does not roll like that. You can't establish a world and have a doubt in your mind. You cannot say, let there be light. I wonder if this is going to God can't speak that way. So when you get God in you, God will teach you to speak the language I call God. And when you speak the language of God, your mind, your heart, and your mouth are on the same sheet of paper. Amen. And that's why when, back in the old days, we used to make people pray until they could get of a unity in mind. That's why the Bible says it like this, a double-minded Man is unstable in all his ways because his mouth is saying one through, his mind is saying one through. He's saying, I love you, baby, but he got the other girl on his mind. So he ain't going to never perfect that, that relationship because he's got another relationship on his mind. Mary Wells says, I got two lovers, and I ain't ashamed. Two lovers, and I love them both the same. But really, she was talking about this guy had schizophrenia. <laughs> it was really one person. But, but she saw two different people at different times when you get through the portion of the song. But initially, I'm like, two lovers, and you ain't ashamed? Two lovers, and you love them both the same? Hold on a minute. There's something wrong here. Now, so we come to understand that God is not a divided God. He is one God, one Lord, one Savior, one baptism, God of all. So God only wants you to have one. one God. And that one God, think about it, if that one God had multiple personalities, like Greeks may say, and all those different things, then you would go to God, and on a given day, you would know who he was. 
Because you wouldn't know what personality. what personality I'm dealing with. Y'all know humans like that. Come on now. Y'all know from one day to the next where they're at. But God, if God is going to give you, let me, let me show you something here. How many, if I got $5, can I give $5? Mm -hmm. Can I give $5? Mm -hmm. Why? All right. If $5 is all I have, how much can I give? So if this is all I got in my pocket, I have it no other way, how much can I give? Oh, that's right. See, now, let me show you something. Now, the Bible says, for God did not give us the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Now, if God don't fear nobody, can he give you a spirit of fear? No, no. He ain't got it. He ain't got it to give. So fear... That ain't God. If you make worlds, who you fearing? Nobody. Everything belongs to you. you. Does the Godfather fear anybody? No. <laughs> no. So, in other words, God cannot give you what he don't possess. He can only give you what he possesses. Can he give you his spirit? Yes. yes. And his, his spirit holy? Yes. That's why he only gives you a a Holy Spirit. So you can only give away. That's why we teach people how you need to be clean inside because what's inside is what you're going to give. Mm -hmm. And now if you're not stable inside, you're going to give distortion outside because you are not definitive. When you're not definitive, you can only give up instability. So if you're trying to stabilize a child and you can't make up your mind, you will duplicate because that's going to be in your gene pool when you give it out. All right? So now what's in God's gene pool? What's in God's DNA? Power, Authority, mm -hmm. power, love, power is authority. Power, love, and what? A sound mind. Now, how many times people try to roll up on you and act like your mind ain't sound? Mm -hmm. Now, what are you going to do from this day forward? Listen to them or listen to God? Listen to God. Excuse me, I have a sound mind. The issue may be you just don't understand how sound my mind is. Because what you're talking to me about my mind is so much sounder than that that I can't even give credence to what you're talking about. I would have to get a weak mind to devil with the, the devil with what you're talking about. I'm going to keep the mind, even Jesus said it like that. Paul said it. Paul said, let this mind be in you that was also where? In Christ. In, did he say take somebody else's mind? Christ said, here's the mind that I use. <laughs> I use the mind of God. Which gives me what? Power, love, and a sound mind. Now, what is love? Love is the display of a commitment that will not lessen itself up against life's realities. Love is a commitment that will not let anybody else deter or diminish what it is. Love is a commitment that starts before people are ready to be loved, committed to Daryl said he committed to baby girl. The minute he, he found out she was on the way. She didn't even know him. <laughs> so he found out somebody was pregnant. Oh, he was already in love with her. And she was where? In a cellular level. He had already made the commitment. He had already committed for the rest of her life. I want you to catch this thing, how love is more powerful. Look, he done committed all the way. He done looked all the way beyond her faults and seen her needs and already committed to it. He has already been down the road and he's like, my God, he only know what kind of teenager she's going to be. He already he, he don't know how much money she's going to spend the day, but he already he don't know. You understand what I'm saying? You don't have a clue what it's going to cost you, but yet you Come on, somebody, talk about God. It, you know, but in the, while we were yet in our sin, in our era, mm -hmm. he committed to us and wouldn't back off and give us scriptures like, what shall separate me from the love of God? In other words, God said, you, you can't be bad enough for me to stop wanting to commit to you because I size you up before I let you come here. You can never pull something that I'm going to be, oh my Lord, I didn't know he was going to do that. God said, I looked at your whole life before I committed to you. So, now I'm going to turn that around. So if God looked at your whole life before he committed to you, then if you committed something wrong...